Hi, as I explained in the previous episode, I am uploading two videos per model, one edited and one uncut. This is the uncut version of the Logitech speakers and I'm going to show you everything with only mild editing. Technically, I record the intro of the previous video before this one. So if you didn't watch the first episode, you have no business being here. As I said, I want you to follow the sequence I'm giving you. Uh, watch the first episode first, then watch this one. So this is the speaker that I'm going to use as the model for this episode. Uh, I haven't done this before. It is consisted of different components and they are assembled together. As you can see, I can demontage it again and can put it back together. However, doing so requires working with uh, multi-body design. And since you are beginners, I'm deciding whether or not should, it, should I do it multi-body or... All right, I will refer to it for a second and then move on. But then I'm gonna uh, make it as one complete solid body. You can see that we have some cavity here. I'm gonna measure all of this and you're gonna see how I do it exactly. Okay. I'm gonna use this caliper, very cheap, but does the job, so let's do that. Okay. As I said, this video is not gonna have too, mu too many cuts and editings, just music and stuff like that, but no more cuts from here on end okay guys this is going to be the model and since it's connected to my computer and i'm too okay the cable management i'm not really good at it it's really bad the situation down there so i cannot really move it i'm gonna work with it here in front of the camera so you can look at it good when i see this object and i want to model it i try to break it down into its main features and its main geometry. So what are the main features that we see over here? We have a surface here, which is kind of an oval, and we have a circle concave like this. Of course, there is a ring here. There is another surface here. There are different materials. I'm not denying that, but there is one big surface here, which is very softly uh, going in, and then it gives a room or it's a bank to this speaker set here. I don't know what this surface is called. If you know that, you can comment it below. And when I rotate it, okay, we have the casing, right? The geometry of the casing goes from oval. It's not an exact oval. It's just kind of like a slot. It goes back to some sort of a rectangle with rounded edges. So on the back, we have a different geometry and on the front, we have a diff different geometry and since these are two are on and since the, <laughs> these two are uh, on two different planes the perfect tool a lot of you might know that already for this is loft but um i could show you that too in a different video i have already made an ultimate tutorial for loft if you want to know how that works you can go and watch this the link i'm going to put the link in the description below but in this case I'm going to start a little bit easier. See what other options we have. Look, if I, without measuring anything, um, if I draw a rectangle, I'm not going to measure anything, as I said, and I'm just going to extrude it randomly. Let's just say 20, oh no, let's just say 50. And then over here, I'm going to activate draft and draft it outward because as you, as you can see, this oval here is bigger than this geometry, this geometry on the back. So it kind of expands outward. It drafts outward. So check outward and then increase the angle until we have something like this. You can see that. I can click OK and go work with like professional level um, loft. It's variable size, fill it. You could just select this edge that you want to select. It would give you different points let's see v, v1 is this one so this end is v1 the radius is going to be much bigger so i'm going to set it to 20 oh much bigger 50 now 
40 okay and on v2 which is this end i'm gonna set it to 20. so it's gonna be no even less 10. yeah something like that okay so it's gonna be rounded up like this as you can see and then i can quickly just mirror this back and forth uh mirror this feature like that and then another feature uh, sorry another mirror um dun, 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 dun. yeah obviously okay so it kind of gives us that geometry but it kind of looks really ugly we, we don't want to do kind of we want to do accurate that's why i have the calibers so i do have to use loft and for that again you can go to the description description below i have explained loft in details perfectly watch that and come back here if you don't know how loft works so let's delete everything and let me start from the top okay chica chica. okay i have the width here at and by the way my dimensions are in millimeters and as always i will put the conversion on the bottom right corner of the screen in inches so 94.1 millimeters is the width of the slot and this is the case the shell we can just reduce the wall thickness from it but i'm gonna do that later and the okay the length is a little bit longer than the calipers range so i'm gonna do it roughly from somewhere right here we have 35.2 on top of uh, 160, 195.2. Okay. I'm gonna use straight slot. Go up. Actually, I don't like this. I told you in the uh, beginner series, I always want to put my sketch in the middle. So the coordinate points, it is in the center of my sketch. For that, I'm gonna use this type instead of this one. So the first point defines the center point. Now my slot is in the middle or the coordinate point is in the center of my slot. Um, dimensions. I just said 195 point something, but let's just round it up 195. And by the way, if you are wondering how I selected these two endpoints, because if you just select these two, it just converts it into the center to center. However, I did the max dimension it's a quick pro tip. If you hold shift on your keyboard, then select the arcs, you are able to do the min and max dimensioning at the same time. There is no need to put a point on your arc and stuff like that. Okay, we have 95 and it was, I forgot, 94, 94.6. Let's just do this one with the accurately. Okay, so this is the outer shell, right? And I'm going to leave it at this and rebuild the sketch. I have one sketch right here ready. For loft, we need at least two. Let's just measure the depth. 81. 880. Oh, this is a little bit curved, so maybe this is best to measure it at the ends. Right, 77, confirm it, do you concur, 78.8, we're going to do 78.8, okay, we need the second sketch to be at 78.8 millimeters away from this plane, so since we use the front plane, we're going to have to create a duplicate of the front plane and then put it at 78.8 millimeters away from this one. How do we duplicate that? Obviously I can quickly do it like this and just add the 78.8 and done, but you wouldn't know what I did. So let's just do it slowly. Front plane, then you go to the features tab, click on reference geometry and then pick plane and then set it to 78.8. Let's just flip it to the other side and click okay. Good. Now we're gonna click on this new plane and Click on sketch and make it normal too. Good. And now we're gonna draw this geometry on the back. It is 
a rectangle with rounded edges width of 74 so let's pick center rectangle from here this is this type center rectangle and draw something like this use smart dimension guys i'm using a uh, mouse gesture on habit i just turned my mouse like smart smart to, to smart dimension like this but if you don't know how to do it this is not the video to learn that uh, you can just go on sketch tab pick smart dimension manually okay so pick that and we select these two lines set it to 74.4 nice and we're gonna need the height over here I just quickly measure it like this. Oh, again, too big. Since this is very rough, we don't need to be like super duper accurate. This 159, let's do 160. 160. Why is it not fully fine? Oh, how come it's not on the center? Go in the center, man. Okay, now. This is going to be this, and we have a rounded edge here. How do we measure this radius over here? Well, there are different ways to do so. You can take a piece, you can take a piece of paper, you can be creative, and... Okay, how do I measure, um, okay, I'm gonna take a different, okay, how do I measure the arc length over here or the radius here? It's difficult to find the center of this arc and therefore measure the radius. I'm gonna do it differently. I'm gonna measure the length of the arc because it's an easier act to do. I'm gonna take a piece of post-it here and place it where the arc starts, which is somewhere on here and bend it, wait. Bend it all the way to here. I would say this is this much from here to here, roughly. So this is the my, my arc length. I can simply measure this one. Which is um, about 41 millimeters. So let's see how I deal with that. Make it normal too and make an arc i can use sketch fillet but if i want to use this then i need uh the radius since i don't have the radius and i don't want to do a reverse engineering to find the radius i will do something different i will pick three point arc place one point here second point here and the third point somewhere here press escape first of all i'm gonna hold control select this line and the arc and make him go tangential I'm going to repeat that, this one and this one, tangential. Now I'm going to pick smart dimension, select the first point, select the second point, select the body of the arc to turn my smart dimension into arc length. Then I set it at 41 point something. Let's just see it at 45, 41. See how it happened? Now, I have two closed sketches right now. And if I do this three more times, I'm going to end up having way more. So if you can see, we have one sketch, one close sketch here and one here. We want to get rid of the outer ones. How do, you do, how do we do that? Use trim entities, leave it at power trim and check the box. Keep trimmed entities as construction geometry. If you don't do that, what you get rid of could damage the status of your sketch, which was fully defined. Now it's back to being underdefined. So let me control Z back to the state where it's fully defined and black. If you don't know what fully defined and uh, underdefined means, you should go watch my 2021 series for beginners where I explain this and more. So you select trim entities, you check this box. So when you get rid of these entities, it doesn't get rid of them, it just turns them into construction lines and they lose function. It's not a closed area anymore. Now, all I have to do is to repeat that couple of more times and the faster way to do this is to measure the radius here with a smart dimension now that we know the arc length is 41 the radius turns out to be 26.1 so quickly I'm gonna select this 26.1 and convert my three other points 
into rounded edges. Did you see what I did? And click OK. Now, I have two different sketch, two different sketches on two different planes. I'm going to hide my plane and I'm ready to do the loft because it's a simple loft. So feature tab, pick loft, pick the first sketch, pick the second sketch and you get a loft which is a little bit twisted. I don't like it. And the reason for that is these two points are selected automatically by SolidWorks as a start and end point. A little bit not optimal. I'm going to drag this green point and bring it to the next possible station like this. Still a bad point because you see what effect we are creating here. This is what I mean by unedited video. I wouldn't have known this. Now I have to just go and find a solution for it. Obviously, um, this alone wouldn't solve it. So I'm going to have to use some guide curves and it makes the complexity of this video a little bit, to be honest, um, more. All right. Guide curves. Guide curves have to be on a different planes when you're working with uh, loft. Again, go watch that loft video. Now it's more important than ever. I'm going to pick uh, right plane, activate the sketch, take line and place two points here. Done and place two more points here. Another line here and here. Escape. Get rid of it. On like rotation. All right. Our sketch is not fully defined because it's not connected to our sketch. And to do so, all you have to do is to select that point, hold the control key down, select your sketch, then click on pierce and add pierce as a sketch relation to those entities. Now it's black. If I do the same over here, point control line pierce, and it goes fully defined, which is perfect. And my mistake is I technically had to draw these two guidelines on two different sketch sets but both of them are here so let's see what we can do another thing i forgot again pierce guys when i select it from this shortcut it's just faster it's there is no difference between this and what happens here okay this now let's see what we can do with this loft first second sketch we go to the guide curves section We select this guide curve. All right, since we have two guide curves drawn on one sketch set, SolidWorks needs to know, okay, are these together? Do you want to select them individually? That's why you get this box, which is called Selection Manager. And I'm going to leave it at that. Select Open Loop and check. So another time, I'm going to select the other one. Again, Open Loop, check. Now I have selected two guidelines in one sketch. Again, it's not perfect. You see these warped surface over here. I really don't like that. So it turns out this rounded radius is not working perfectly with this. So what can I do to solve this one? Maybe I have to add another um, guide curve here to fix it. I can click OK quickly so you guys see how ugly it would look. Look, it's kind of warped and these two edges. Uh, okay, I see a couple of ways to fix this. I can go and add more guide curves here until it just goes well, or I can just trick it. I just found a new way. I just thought about a new way technically. Um, let's see what I do. I'm going to play, play, um, I'm going to select my right plane where, which cuts my component in half and then go cut my component in half. Faster way would be to go to the surface tab. This is a very quick tip and select cut with surface. Then select the right plane and say whatever's on the other side, just cut it for me, please. Thank you very much. Then since my component is absolutely symmetrical, I know if I mirror this, I have already taken care of the other side again. I mean, at least this is what I think. Let's see if it actually works. Right plane, go back to features tab, select mirror. Uh, it's a body, so we go to bodies. If you don't know what a body is, then you have to watch uh, my other video where I explain the difference between a feature and body. I'm gonna put the link in the description below. 
select the body and click OK. Nice. Although I get this line in the middle, but nothing has changed. The geometry is the same. I have taken care of that side. Only there is only one warp here and that can be fixed with another cutting again. Select this plane, cut it in half and this time mirror it this way. The fact that I can use my planes immediately to mirror my component is because I have set every sketch I had from the beginning on the center of my canvas. The coordinate points was in the middle of my sketch. Okay, I could go and add way more guide curves to get a similar or um, very homogenic, homogenic surface, but I decided to do it like this. Now we have some rounded edges over here. Again, you can use the same trick. You can use a piece of paper, measure it. Okay, the arc length is 72. This time I'm gonna do it different. If my um, arc length is 72, what is my radius? I cannot tell you that because I don't have, can I say that? I don't have the angle, right? Okay, so for that, I will open a new canvas. What's going on SolidWorks? Please don't bail on me. Okay, SolidWorks is acting awesome again and it's not doing what it's supposed to. Let's quickly save that before we lose it, which is weird. All right, guys, let's see. We just said our arc length was 42. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to create something like this. Or better, let's go back because I have the accurate angle here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick the right plane, activate the sketch. I'm going to draw one sketch from here to here, one from here to here. And I'm going to use three point arc. Yes, this is the best way. Let's quickly fix this line because it's just for reference, no use for them. And I just wanted to have this angle here and I don't need to measure it again because it's already existing here. I'm just going to build upon it and get the radius I want and then go back and use fillet and then use that fillet. So select these two, make them tangential, select these two, make them tangential. And now pick smart dimension, first point, second point arc, make it, what did I say? I forgot. Um, it wasn't 40, it was like seven. Yeah, seven millimeters. And now we measure the radius that we need, which is 5.18. Now I can delete everything. All I wanted was that radius, 5.18. Done. Okay, so we go to fit it, set it to normal type, 5.18. And I'm gonna select this plane and then boom. This is the exact effect I wanted to have here. As you can see on my screen, it's very similar to that already. Right, now let's rotate this a little bit more. Um, no curves here, maybe very small. We're gonna ignore that. And I need to know the wall thickness over here. Three millimeters. The wall thickness is three, meter, three millimeters. And the reason I did that is because I wanna uh, shell this component out, scoop all these materials out and leave nothing but a wall of uh, three millimeters all around, including the one in the back. And the perfect tool to do this uh, very quickly said is shell. All you have to do is to select the face that you wanna open up and set your wall thickness to three and then click okay. So this is Look, looks very realistic to be honest. This is going to be my speaker's shell. Quickly save it. We've done enough so far. And now the surface on the top doesn't need measurement because it just has to fit in here. And I'm gonna use this component that I have as a reference 
to make the next component. You know what I want to do? <laughs> I'm going to do something very quick. We have a flat surface here. So I'm going to select it. Uh, from this pop-up menu, I'm going to click sketch, which activate the sketch mode on this highlighted surface. And I'm going to click, click away so it's not highlight highlighted anymore. And then I'm going to go to convert entities over here on the sketch tab, which converts whatever I select into a 2D sketch on the uh, plane that we have activated. In this case, our plane is this flat surface around our shell and click OK. Look, now you see that if I hide my, um, where is tab? If I hide my component, you see this is the sketch that I have. Let's bring it back. And yes, I'm gonna extrude this sketch up just a bit, not a lot. If it's 10, I need it for one. Um, one up, but more down. So I'm gonna activate sketch uh, direction two. Why more down? Because um, I'm gonna create this cavity and I don't want my component to be too thin. Otherwise, when I create this hole, you see the inside and we don't wanna do that. I just set it to five on the second dimension. However, since we have this angle here, if I extrude this like this, they're gonna penetrate into each other and they're gonna merge into one solid body. We could do that, or we could uncheck merge result and create different components. And let's do the latter because it's the better way to do this. Now the radius here is too small. It's not worth measuring. I'm just gonna go for something really small like 0.25 or 0 0.5, 0 0.5, yeah. So this is 0.5 and this is the surface. All we need this circle is here now. Now we need the circle. How do I measure this? The diameter of the circle is 61 millimeters over here. And it's about 16.7 it's about from the top. So let's quickly do that. Select the surface, activate the sketch by selecting the sketch option from the pop-up menu. Again, I can do that because this sketch or this surface is flat. That's why I get this option over here. Because this surface is not flat, I don't get that option. So flat, spacebar, make it normal too. I'm going to draw a circle on the center, not here, not here. I'm going to use this guide curve that we learned to place it in the center like this. Right. And pick smart dimension. First of all, it was 61. Second of all, it was, I forgot. It was 16.4. Look, it doesn't matter. So from this point, I'm going to have to select the circle and the shift, hold shift. And it doesn't work. So circle this point. It works, but center to center. We don't want to do that. I measured corner to center. So I'm going to hold shift, select the circle and select the point like this. 16 point four doesn't matter press escape select the midpoint is still not fully defined you can see that our dimension is bothering us so we move it out again select the center point hold the control key down select the origin point once both are selected add a vertical relation to make it go fully defined and now we have our opening let's just use extruded cut Go like this much. We don't need that much. It's like a five millimeter ish, six. It's fine. We are not gonna see this anymore, so I don't. I don't want to measure it. Right. So this is it, and we're gonna have to have a curve here, which to me looks like this curve over here, which was 5.16 or something, and I'm gonna do the same here. Select this edge. Go to fillet. Set it to. 5.16 maybe this is it maybe it's too much we can measure it again if it's not accurate 
depends how accurate you want to model this. So I have measured it on a paper. It's eight. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller, or maybe it's correct, doesn't matter. Let's just do it at five. No, good. Now we need this ring, and for that we measure it. Thickness is six millimeters. Again, we need a plane to draw this. It's a rounded cross section that revolves around the circle. The best way to do this is to select the right plane, cut it in half. I mean, it's not cutting it. It's actually our view. We are looking at the cross section and then uh, we make it normal to wait this one. Yes. Like it. So we select right plane, activate the sketch, move in here, draw a circle like this. We said the diameter was six. So let's add six, the six is this much. And we want to set it. Yeah, let's put it on here so we cannot move it to the right or left, only up and down. And if we can select this point, hold control down, select this and uh, no, it doesn't work. You know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to fix it um, here without actually fixing it using dimensions or sketch relations. Uh, the best way to do this is use dimensions. So I'm going to select smart dimension from the center to the order coordinate and leave it at that because optically it looks fine. Yep. And we're not finished. We need an axis because we want to revolve this. So this is our axis. And dun dun. Dun dun, dun dun. Features revolve. Oh, yep. My bad. The axis should be in the center of the circle, not on the coordinate system. So again, make it normal too. How do we do that? I'm going to go to sketch tab. First of all, get rid of this. We don't need it. I'm going to use center line where you can find here from the first point of the circle. Oh, we have the midpoint done. Did you see what happened? Again, I'm going to pick smart dimensions. Fix this. We don't care where it's fixed from as long as we have our axis in the center of the circle, which you can see here and confirm. Look, we have the axis. We go to features, revolve bus, and again, uncheck measure results. Otherwise, they two end up being one solid body where you don't want to have them as one solid body. Um, last thing to finish up is to have this surface over here, which is concaved. Uh, well, if it was a little bit higher and I would just draw a surface, then I would use freeform and immediately create this, which is about a couple of seconds of work, but I'm trying to make it for beginners. So again, I use right plane, cut my view in half. So I can look better at what I'm doing over here. Like my view and uh, use right plane, activate the sketch. Good. Uh, if you can work with the three point arc, you should wait a minute. It goes from underneath here. So I'm going to place the first point underneath here and second one somewhere here. And the third one, how can I measure that? Again, you can use a piece of paper. Wait. From here, you go all the way to here. So this is the length of the arc. 45. And I'm going to leave it here. Okay. So smart dimension, first point, second point, arc. 45 then place the points again here if I fix this point so it will move I can move the other one oh oh it doesn't reach there what's going on 
What's wrong? Okay, so maybe it, I fixed it too high. So let's get rid of the fix. I selected that point and it showed me my existing relations. Again, guys, if you don't understand or you cannot follow my steps, you jumped ahead. I want you to go back to episode one and watch everything first then come here. Uh, let's bring it a little bit closer into this body. Again, it's way too small. How is it 45? Maybe I measured wrong. Oh, it's bigger. It's 52, but again, 52 is also not enough. I don't think 52 is enough. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, bad measurement, bad measurement. Okay, let's fix this point. Move this. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's definitely good enough. And let's unfix this. And move it here. Actually, let's make these two points by selecting them both while holding the control key down in a vertical relation. Very good. And place it here. I want both points to be inside the cross section of my ring, which is this one and this one. So as long as the points are inside, I don't really care. Good. Now I have that. Let's fix one of them so it wouldn't move. And okay, no. Control Z, it was good. So what do we do? We go to offset entities. Sorry, to one. I don't know how thick it should be. Reverse it because we measured the outer one. Use a line to close it. Actually, we don't need both half. We just need one half. I'm going to close it in the middle. Uh huh. Go to trim entities. Trim these two. Okay. Now go to feature, revolve. And revolve it around this axis on check merge result and click OK. Now let's see what we just made. Okay, so this is it. This is our speaker looking good. We can proceed to make this uh, holder, which is really easy. This is like an extrusion done. Uh, a couple of more extrusions, but the tricky part was this that I just did. Uh, so I'm going to ignore this. If you want, you can do all the holes in the back and so on and so forth. But I'm going to leave it at this point and do a bonus for you. Let's save this and quickly open this in Keyshot. Okay, guys, um, I just opened this component in Keyshot and let's add some material to it, do a quick rendering so we can get some more satisfaction out of it. I don't want to go into details. It's, this video is not about rendering tutorial, so let's just give it a simple uh, look. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. It's a little bit darker here and it's a little bit lighter here. So we do it like this. So it's more close to reality. And we didn't give it any material. Um, it's plastic. Plastic mat. All right, guys. I don't even want to click on render because this is the preview. It's good enough. I'm going to leave it at that. And this is how I would model something. So odd looking. It's not that odd looking, but well, it was more complicated than I wanted. I thought it would be easier to be honest. Um, it had loft again for loft. Go watch my video. 
I'm gonna put the link in the description below. Um, for the mini series, you have to watch the first four episodes, definitely, if you are watching this video, because otherwise there will be gaps in your knowledge and you cannot follow me. And the link is also in the description below. And we just uh, learned a few more things in this video, such as guide curves, a workaround where the where the where the loft wasn't doing what we wanted. So I cut the component in half and just mirrored it, mirrored the good part to replace the bad part. Well, these are the techniques that you will learn once you know how to work with the tools. Good. Now that you saw this and you have already seen the edited version, then uh, we can move on to the next episode soon. All right, folks, I hope you learned something new. Did you see the difference between the edited version and the unedited version? In the unedited version, which was this episode number two, I actually did the thing first. And in the first episode, I was actually a little bit warmed up. I did this practice run in this episode. So things go more smoothly. So when you do something for the first time, you're going to have to think outside of the box. You're going to have to have more tools and knowledge at your disposal. So when you get stuck, you can do a workaround. You don't want to get stuck and just keep looking for solutions. Eventually, you're going to have to solve that solution uh, correctly. But knowing some alternative moves help you work around it and just get the job done until you get some chance to just do some research and improve your knowledge on that, build upon that. And this is the purpose of this new series that I'm putting. Okay, having said that, if you don't practice, and if you don't practice right, watching these videos, you might as well just skip it. Go, go watch something fun. If you are here, if you're dedicated to learn, I want you to actually do the work. So I have put this download link where it takes you to my website. You are gonna have to register, it's free. You just enter your email, then you can download these practice sheets. Also on top of that, you get some, uh, if you want some free mini courses, uh, free webinars, that's up to you. If you don't check the box, you don't get that, but you can get that too. And do the work. When you do the work, uh, you're ready for the next episodes that I'm practicing. I'm taking a short break, maybe for a month, but I'll be back soon. See you soon.